Last episode was all about getting OP. I got villagers, maxed out all of my armor and tools, and looted a Willen mansion for some totems of undying. As I was doing that though, I left a lot of projects unfinished. The storage cave I started isn't done, this villager breeder needs a building around it, and all of my villagers are just in these dirt holes. So today, we're gonna fix all of that. Now what we need to do first is make a villager trading hall. Right now, all my villagers are out in the open here, which isn't very safe. All it takes is one zombie, and they're gone. So this trading hall needs to get done. I already scouted an area to build this thing, and it's it's gonna go right here. Eventually, I'm gonna turn this entire meadow into a little village, and this is gonna be the first building that we add to it. But now we can start collecting up the blocks that I'll need for this building. I'm gonna need lots of oak wood, lots of spruce wood, and some deep slate. Creeper! And that's it, we're ready to start building. Now, since this is a trading hall, it has to be this long rectangle shape. But boxes never look good, so I added this little part that sticks out right here, and this is gonna be the entrance. The bottom is gonna be lined with deep slate, and the walls with stripped oak logs. And I'm also gonna mix it up with some oak planks to give it some texture. After a little bit of building and texturing, this is what it's looking like so far without the roof. I'm not sure if I like how this is turning out right now because I've never built anything in this shape before, but hopefully when I add the roof it'll look a lot better. And there we go, the roof is done. It definitely looks a lot better than it did before. I still have to add some details to the outsides and put some windows in here, but it's almost complete. And there we go, all the windows are added. And then I'm going to use some trap doors on the sides to look like shutters. And there we go, the outside of the trading hall is done. Oh my gosh! I guess the inside is a mob spawner and not a trading hall. Now the inside isn't done yet because I want to do something before I put the villagers in here. And that's connecting my villager breeder to my trading hall. That way the villagers can come directly out of here and come straight into the trading hall. But this villager breeder is really big and it's not in a great spot. It's pretty close to my nether portal and I don't like where it is. So instead of building a huge building around it, I'm just going to relocate it to be underground. And then I'm going to build a little house on the surface so I can access the breeder underground. Now the first thing is going to be moving all these villagers out of the way. I'm gonna build a channel going in this direction, and then I'm gonna try to use water to move them over there. Wow, I got a lot of villagers. I didn't realize how fast that villager breeder was working, that's crazy. It's working! Oh gosh, okay, my trades are gonna be expensive now. Wait a minute. Oh, they're escaping, oh no! One came all the way over here, and there's one over here too. How am I gonna get these guys to go back in? Come on, villager friend. Okay, that one went back in, that was easy. Let's get this guy to go now. I did it, okay. This is working surprisingly well. All right, with that out of the way, I can finally relocate this villager breeder. And to do that, I'm gonna need some boats and a little bit of persuasion. We got one, and now the other. That was easy. Now I can destroy all of this, and there we go, it's all torn down. And now I can start moving these villagers to where I want them to be. All right. And right about here is where the breeder is going to be. Oh god, a pillager patrol. Let's try to get these guys to kill the leader. Here we go. That was so easy. Because I'm really close to all these villagers and I don't want to start a raid on accident. All right, let's get this last one into position. And you know what? These villagers are actually in the way. I'm going to have to move them back to where they were. And now I can start clearing out the area for the farm. And there we go. It's all cleared out. Now I just have to add a layer of grass along this whole thing. That way I can put the farm on top of this. In the center, there's going to be some water. And then on top of that, some composters with some glowstone. And then turning all of this into farm farmland with carrots. And that's the main part of the farm done. Now I just have to add some glass around all of it. And then I can build up the collection system. And there we go, it's done. Now I just have to move these two villagers down here. I think if I dig straight down right here, I should be on top of the farm. Now I should be able to just drop down like this. There we go. And we'll do the same thing with this guy. Okay, they're both farmers. I think it's working. I'm gonna give these guys all the extra carrots. That way they can start breeding as fast as possible. And then I'll close this all up. And now that I have the breeder all done, I need to work on the collection system down here. Because the baby villagers are gonna come over here, they're gonna fall down into this pit, and then they need to go somewhere. I need to add one bit of water right here. Now right here, what I'm gonna do is build a sorting elevator. Wait a second, I just heard a baby. Oh look, it's working. It's amazing. Let's see, I want the elevator to come out where I'm gonna build this little house. I think the house is gonna go somewhere right here, so we're gonna have to make the water stream go around to here. Let's see, is that gonna be easy? Yeah, I'll just have to go like this, and then we'll make a turn right here, and let's see where we end up. Okay, this is actually pretty close to where I wanted it to be, which is perfect. Okay, so this is kind of how it's gonna go. The baby villagers are going to get stuck down here because they're not tall enough to go in the water yet. But once they grow up, they'll be tall enough to hit the water and the water will transport them up. I'm going to place some walls around here for now. That way, once this baby grows up, we can test to see if it works. And now as we're waiting for the baby villager to grow up, I'm going to go collect up the blocks that I'll need for the building. I already have most of the stuff that I'll need. Lots of spruce, lots of oak, and lots of cobbled deep slate. But there is one thing that I'm missing, and that's lots of copper. I haven't built anything with copper yet in this world, so I think this would be a good build to do it on. And before 
I go mining, I need to head over to the nether real quick so I can heal up my tools. This XP farm is so slow. I thought building a blaze XP farm would be super fast, but I guess I was wrong. Literally 10 minutes later and my axe still isn't healed up. There we go, it's finally healed. Okay, now I can work on my pickaxe. Wait a second, is my farm overflowing? Oh my gosh. That's a lot of blaze rods. And this hopper's entirely filled up too. Sure, the XP isn't great, but at least I got a ton of blaze rods. 10 more minutes later and my pickaxe is almost fully healed. There we go. Now I can finally move on to my hoe. And there we go. All of my tools are finally healed. That took forever. Do you guys know what kind of XP farm I can make that works better than this one? Because that was painful. But now that I have that done, I can finally start mining for some copper. Right underneath my house is this massive dripstone cave. This time I actually landed the MLG water. But copper is most common in dripstone caves, so this should go pretty quick. This is gonna go so fast. Look at all this stuff. The only thing that's slowing me down is all these mobs. And I might as well grab all this coal too, because I'm gonna be needing it to smelt up all the copper. Oh my gosh, look at what I just found. This giant vein right here, and then another one right next to it. It's amazing, and that should be all the copper that I need. Now let's go check to see if this elevator worked. Look at that, it did. There's a villager right here. So now that I know that my elevator works, I can finally start building this little house around it. But step one is turning all of this copper ore into some raw copper. And here we are. Let's see how much we can get. And we made it. Wow, that is a lot of copper. I need to craft some chests as soon as possible because I don't want this stuff to despawn. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it's already a lot. And there's even more on the ground still. Is it going to be a full double chest? Wow, that is a lot of copper. And to smelt all of that, I'm going to need quite a few blast furnaces. We have our first blast furnace, and now we have nine. Loading them all up with coal, and then with copper. Let's see. Ooh, this is going fast. Now all this copper is going to be used for the roof, so while we wait for that to smelt up, I can start working on the base of the house. Just like the trading hall, I'm going to make the base of this house out of cobbled deep slate and deep slate bricks. Now for the size of the house, I'm going to be using some spruce planks and stripped spruce logs. Here it is without the roof. It looks kind of weird, but trust me, this copper roof's gonna look super cool. And I can load up the furnaces one last time, because look at all this copper we've already gotten. Let's turn this all into some cut copper. How do I do that? Do I need a crafting table? Wait, how do you do this? It's been a while since I've used copper. Do I go like this? And then I make cut copper. Wait, but then I know there's a better way to do this, right? Okay, I think I figured it out. I have to put the copper blocks into here. Yes, okay, that way I can get one cut copper for, wait, hold on. That's the exact same as the crafting table. Wait, what? I thought there was a better way, but I guess this is it. Oh, okay, you get 16. Wait a second. I don't know how to do math. If I go like this, and then I put this into here, I only get four. Okay, so it does make a difference if I use the stone cutter. Okay, cool. Let's make a bunch of cut copper, and then I can turn some of this into cut copper stairs. And there we go. I'm going to start with this. So we're going to make a tall roof like this, and I'm going to be lining it with some deep slate. Here's what the roof is looking like so far, and I think it turned out really good. I'm loving the contrast between the deep slate and the copper. It looks so cool. But right here in the center, I'm going to add a little tower. I'm going to be making this out of the same materials that I made the house out of. And there it is, our little fantasy house. I haven't done much work inside here, but there are a ton of villagers. I also added this cage right here so you could see them. And this is going to look even better once all the copper starts to oxidize. But for now, let's start working on the inside of this collection system. Now, what I'm going to need to make this sorting system is some rails and some mine carts. Let's make a few mine carts. And then I'll make some rails as well as some powered rails. And then I need one dispenser. I'm also going to need some glass. And I should have everything I need. Now, I just realized to build this sorting system, I'm gonna have to reroute these villagers. Oh my god, I just fell into lava in the nether. This is not good. I was going into the nether so I could get some lava, but then I ended up falling into it. Luckily, protection four makes this not very dangerous, and I don't think I'll have to use my enchanted golden apple. Okay, I'm close to land, and there we go. But now I can grab the lava that I came here to get, and then I can head home. Now, what I was gonna say before I got rudely interrupted by the lava is by reroute, I mean burn to death. They're escaping, no, don't escape. Okay, there we go. Now, the reason that I'm killing them with lava is so they don't get angry and raise their prices. Since if a villager drowns in lava, it doesn't count as a player kill. All right, I'm gonna have to move this elevator to go behind here. This is proving to be a lot more difficult than I expected. After quite a bit of trial and error, I finally ended up with this. Before, the villagers were coming out right here and they were coming to the top, but instead I had to make them come this way, go around this turn, and then I'm gonna place some water up here, then they go up another elevator and come out right here into the building. It's kind of a weird way to do it, but it's the best that I could come up with. So now that I have the elevators done, I can work on the sorting system. And it's going to go a little something like this. And then I can place some glass around this. And we should be good to go. The last thing I have to add is a dispenser right here. And inside this dispenser, I'm going to add some minecarts. All right, let's test it. Here we go. It works. Okay, perfect. And now I have to make a path out here for the rails to go. And this is going to link up with the trading hall. Oh, look at that. We have our first villager. It's working. Wait a minute. I just realized I forgot something pretty important. For this trading hall to be useful, we're going to need to get some villagers with very cheap 
cheap trades. And the best way to do that is to cure zombie villagers. So before I link these rails with the trading hall, I'm gonna make a little villager conversion area. Instead of making it underground like I normally would, I wanna make another little building to put it in. It's gonna go right next to this build, so I want it to be in kind of a similar style. Okay, here's the build without the roof so far, and it's looking pretty good. It matches this building pretty nicely. Now since I have tons of copper left over, I'm also gonna be putting a copper roof on this one too. Alright, I have the whole roof framed in deep slate, and now I just have to fill it in with copper. And there we go, it's all done. It looks pretty good next to this building. I'm definitely gonna need some details on the outside though, because right now it's just this blank wall and it doesn't look very good. Okay, it's all complete. Let's take a look at our three new builds with some shaders. Okay, uh, everything's dark because it's sunset, so let's try again in the morning. And there we go, we can finally see all three builds in the sunlight. They look so cool with shaders on, it's crazy. Okay, that's enough time looking at things with shaders. It's time to get this villager conversion area done. After spending a bit of time with this, everything should be set up. Right here is where the zombie is going to go, and it's perfect timing because it's nighttime. Let's go see if we can find one. Wait a second, hold on. We can't do it just yet. I need a name tag. All right, and I have one name tag. Now we need to head back to the enchanting cave to get our anvil, and we're going to name the zombie the doctor because the advancement you get from curing a zombie villager is zombie. Wait, what is it? Is it zombie doctor? Hold on. I need to look at this. Okay, it is zombie doctor. So we're going to call the zombie the doctor. And now we just have to find one. Okay, I have tons of zombies following me. This is amazing. Surely one of them will want to go inside. There we go. Go. Okay, now come this way, and then we're gonna push him in like that, and then we're gonna place a rail, and then we're gonna grab the water, and he should be stuck. I think he is. Yeah, he's stuck, and he's holding an item, so we don't even have to name him, but I'm gonna name him anyways just for fun. Okay, this guy wants to be the doctor too, I guess, and there we go. We have the doctor. Let's sleep real quick because things are getting a little chaotic. Oh no, this has to be a powered rail. Oh god, I need to place water real quick, and then I can break this. We'll go powered rail, and then we're good. Let's see if this works. All right, we're grabbing one. He's coming over here. And I think I have to leave the room for the doctor to do his magic. It looks like it's working. And there we go. Okay, that is not hard at all. But now I can kill this guy because he's no longer a villager. Now that I have this conversion station done, I can work on linking it to my trading hall. All right, I've successfully linked the zombie conversion area to my trading hall. And since my trading hall is not big enough for all my villagers, I decided to dig down and I'm going to add two levels. The most important villagers will go on top and then everybody else will go downstairs. After spending a bit more time clearing all this out, I finally have the design of the underground and above ground rooms all done. Now the only thing we have left to do is build the villager pods and then we can start moving them in. I was thinking for these that I would use some oak for the pillars on the sides, and then on top I would use some smooth stone and stone bricks. And to finish it off, I'm gonna add some item frames on top, that way we can keep track of their trades. Now I finished all the trading pods along the wall right here, but there's a lot of dead space in the center of this room. So I'm gonna try to add some trading stations right here in the center too. And there we go, the downstairs trading hall is all done. And now I'm just gonna repeat the same thing upstairs. And there we go, it's all done. Now we can start moving in the villagers. If I remember correctly, they should all be under ground over here. Oh my gosh, here they are. It's chaos down there. Okay, that's a lot more villagers than I remember. I'm gonna need to find a way to separate the ones that have jobs from the ones that don't. So I'm gonna expand this dirt pit just a little bit. Alright, let's let them all out. And I guess I can try using workstations to lure these guys. Let's see, I'm gonna grab some lecterns, and I wonder if this is gonna do anything to separate them. Okay, it didn't work at all. <laughs> it's still a mess in here. So we have to resort to plan B, and plan B is putting everyone in boats. Let's get these guys out of the way. Oh my god, they're all dying. Oh no, they're all dying. No, 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 no. And these guys all have jobs. Okay, this is a disaster. Go in a boat, go in a boat. I need more boats. And now that all the villagers are contained, I can start sorting them by the ones that have jobs versus the ones that don't. The ones that have jobs, I'm going to keep in the boats like this. And the ones that don't, well, lava. These two don't have jobs, so I'm gonna box them in like this and give them some lava. I feel so evil. Oh great, that's bad. I just killed my mending villager. There's a few more that don't have jobs like this one. Okay, they're both dying now. That's great. Okay. Why do they not get extinguished when they're in a boat? <laughs> I keep killing my villagers. When this is done, I'm gonna have none left. Okay, there we go. I finally separated all the villagers that have jobs from the ones that don't. And I also killed five of them that have jobs in the process. So maybe that wasn't the best thing to do, but at least they're separated now, which will make it a lot easier to get them into the trading hall. But instead of bringing them directly to the trading hall, I'm gonna make a quick pit stop at the zombie conversion area, and I'm gonna see if I can make their trades a bit cheaper. So to do that, I'm gonna have to set up a quick railway and then try to get these guys into some minecarts. 
Minecart. Okay, we got one. He's gonna be our first victim. Okay, it's working. He's in there. We got them all into minecarts, finally. Now, before I can do anything else to convert these guys, I need to get some potions of weakness and some golden apples. I already organized all my stuff up here, so I have spider eyes, brown mushrooms, and sugar. I can turn these into some fermented spider eyes. And then with all this glass, I can turn it into some bottles, fill the bottles up with water, and start brewing some potions of weakness. There we go, and then one gunpowder to turn it into a splash potion. And now we have half of what we need to cure these guys. The other half is a bunch of golden apples. I only have 52 gold right now, which is enough for six golden apples, plus the two that I already had, and that's eight. That should be enough for all the villagers I have down here, but we'll definitely need to get more gold if I want to cure even more villagers. All right, I think I'm ready to convert my first villager. It's working! And then I can move him this way, and he'll get parked right here. And I'm trying to hold a few of them in the center like this. That way I can convert them all with one splash potion. I can splash these guys all at once, and then feed them each a golden apple. There we go, we have three curing at once. As I'm waiting for that to go, I'm gonna do these other villagers now. This is actually working pretty good. Then I can splash these two now. You know what? I don't really like how close these guys are together, so I'm actually gonna start moving them down to the trading hall. This guy with the shovel does so much damage. I'm gonna put my totem in my offhand just in case. The reason why I'm trying to separate them is if they cure at different times, then they can convert each other back into zombie villagers, and I don't want that to happen. Oh, look at that. It worked. I'm officially a zombie doctor. <laughs> All right, let's go look at these other guys over here now. Gotta make sure they're not converting each other. Okay, here they are. Oh, looks like this one converted. Oh, this one got turned back into a zombie villager. See that? How he's not shaking? That's exactly what I was trying to avoid. In the future, I should probably do like one or two at once. That way it doesn't become as chaotic. All right, well, this guy turned back into a zombie, so I'm gonna have to cure him again. I really didn't want to have to waste another golden apple on you. And now I'm just gonna wait right here for these last three to cure. Oh, there we go. We got one. We got two. And now we're waiting on just this guy. We'll separate this guy over here. That way the rest of our villagers are safe. Now I'm not really sure where I'm going to put these villagers, so let's get that figured out right now. I want the important villagers to go upstairs, but I don't really know which villagers are important. It's definitely going to be the ones that give me the most emeralds. So maybe I'll put some farmers, some fletchers, and some cartographers up here. And then maybe downstairs in the center island, we can put all my librarians. And then along the outside, we can put everyone else. I think that works pretty good. Now I have this librarian right here, so let's get him moved into his stall. All right. He's pathfinding to his job, and then I can place a block behind him. And there we go. We got our first villager in a trading pod. All right, now to start moving in the Fletchers. There we go. We have one Fletcher moved in, and now we have our two Fletchers. Okay, now I officially moved in all of my pre-existing villagers, and now it's time to get some new ones. The villager breeder has been working this entire time, so let's go see how many there are in here. Okay, yep, there's definitely enough. Let's grab one. And since we lost our mending villager, I'm going to try to get this one to trade me mending. I wonder how long it's going to take. Oh, I did it. Wait, it's 30 emeralds, though. That's kind of expensive. We got it really quickly, so let's try again for something cheaper. I want something under 20 emeralds. I got mending again, but it's still for 30 emeralds. Let's keep trying. Okay, mending for 24. I still think I can do better though, so I'm gonna keep trying. This villager is taunting me. Mending for 36 now. The prices are going up. I've been doing this for so long that my hands are starting to cramp up. Oh, mending for 12. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's so good. I need to get emeralds right now. I really hope he doesn't reset his trade because it is kind of becoming nighttime. I need to go as fast as possible. I don't know where I put my books. Everything's a mess. Okay, I got a book and I got emeralds. Let's go back. Oh no, it's becoming nighttime. Okay, he's still selling. Perfect. I locked it in for 12 emeralds. Now we can convert him. I wonder how cheap his trade is going to be now. All right, there we go. He's converted. Let's grab a splash potion of weakness. And I only have two golden apples left. Splash potion and golden apple. I really hope he trades for one emerald. That would be really nice. And since I'm down to my last golden apple, I need to go get some more gold. And the best place to do that is going to be in the nether. Okay, let's try to find some gold. And even better, let's try to find a bastion too. The fortress is over in that direction, so I'm gonna go in the opposite direction and see if I can find a bastion. Oh my gosh, seriously? There's one literally right here. And look at that, I already see some gold blocks. Luckily, I used a speed run, and I know exactly where all the gold is. Oh my god, that scared me. <laughs> and I'll pillar up like this, and I should hopefully be able to snipe a few of these guys. The gold room is over in this direction. All I have to do is dig this way. There should be a ton of gold. Yep, here it is. Look at all these gold blocks. It's amazing. This is way easier than mining for gold. Ooh, a soul speed three book. That's actually amazing. That's one of the only enchantments that I'm missing on my boots. And there we go. A successfully looted bastion. I'm going to leave here before it gets too dangerous. Okay, I'm back home with a bunch of gold. I can turn this all into ingots. We have more than a stack of gold now. And I can craft up eight more golden apples. All right, this villager's finally cured. Let's see how much he's selling mending for. One emerald. Okay, it's amazing. That's exactly what I wanted. Let's move him down to the trading hall now. We now have a mending villager that trades mending for one emerald. It's amazing. Now, before we fill up the rest of this trading hall with villagers, I need 
need to get my storage cave finished. Because right now, I just have all of these random chests. And then in my storage cave, it's just a bunch of random chests too. So this has to get fixed before I start getting a bunch of items from the villagers. Step one is going to be bringing all of these random items into the storage cave. Wait, I just realized. Soul speed three. Hold on. Let's go add that to my boots. I'm getting distracted, but it's going to be worth it. Okay, here we are. Let's see how much it costs. 19 emeralds. Oh my gosh. And there we go. Look at those enchantments. That's crazy. And I think my boots are officially maxed out now. If there's any enchantments that I'm missing, please tell me. But now I can come back here and start grabbing all these items to relocate to the storage cave. And now that I have that all done, I can start organizing all the items into their respective sections. Right here is where all the stone, dirt, and gravel is going to go. Over here is going to be the wood section. Over here is where all the farming stuff's going to go. In this section is where I'm going to put all the ores. And then over here is where all the building blocks are going to go. And now that it's all organized by section, I need to figure out where everything's going to go. I want things to make sense, so it might take a little while to get it right. For example, in the wood section, I want to organize everything by wood type, because then it'll make more sense. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do that just yet, so it's going to take a little bit of trial and error. After a few hours, I finally have everything all organized. I didn't realize how many items I had until I had to organize everything. But now every item is in its own chest, and it's going to be super easy to find stuff in the future. But we're not done yet. Everything is organized, but I still have to make this cave look good. And for the design, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhat of a hybrid between a lush cave and a dripstone cave. And on top of that, I also want to fix this entrance, because it's way too big, and I really don't like how it looks. But before we can do any of that, I need to go collect up all the blocks that I'll need to transform this cave. Getting all the dripstone stuff should be really easy, because my house is above a giant dripstone cave down here. All I have to do is jump down, and start gathering some stuff up. That should be enough for the dripstone stuff, and now to go get some lush cave stuff. There's people looking at me through my window. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> I gotta go all the way back to spawn to find that lush cave. Just a little bit more and then I'll have everything I need. And there we go, it's time to head home. Alright, I'm back and it's time to start decorating this cave. I'm gonna start off with some moss on the ground like this, then I'll use some bone meal to spread it around, and it's already starting to look way better. Next, I think over here I'm gonna turn this into some dripstone, kinda something like that. Alright, this is what I have so far. The main section looks like a lush cave and then I have this little dripstone cave area over here, and then in each section it kinda looks like a lush cave as well, and I think it's turning out pretty good. I'm not really liking all the moss on the ground, so I'm I'm gonna make some paths out of some mossy cobblestone and some cobblestone. That way it'll look a little better than just green everywhere. Hello. These guys are always interrupting me. Let's let them kill the captain real quick. And now we can make quick work of all these guys. And I guess I'll put this banner right here as a warning to any future patrols. So I already cleared out an area in the moss for where I want the path to be. And now I'm just randomly adding some mossy cobblestone. And then I'm gonna come in with some spruce slabs. I feel like that'll give it kind of a cool looking texture. And then for the rest of it, I'm gonna throw in some dirt and some coarse dirt. And then for some finishing touches, I'm going to add some random trap doors. And here's the completed path. It looks pretty good. And now all I have to do is fix this entrance and the storage cave will be finally complete. It looks so cool in here. I love the lighting from all the glow berries. It looks really good. Let's look at it with some shaders real quick. Ooh, this looks pretty cool. Oh, there's a zombie. Okay, that's enough looking at things with shaders. It's time to fix this entrance. To do that, I'm going to need lots of stone, lots of grass, and lots of dirt, because this is going to require some pretty extensive terraforming. And there we go. The entrance to the cave is done. I made this little bridge right here, and there's a river that kind of goes underneath it. And then once we get in here, the cave is all done as well. And I think it turned out really good. What do you guys think? But that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!